Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out the last episode. If you're one of those people, I hope you enjoyed the conversation and thanks so much for coming back. But for everyone out there who's new to the show, welcome. Feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer, soda, water, coffee in the fridge. Cheers to everyone out there on the internet today. So that's actually a conversation I would love to get in with you because there are, we'll say, you know, people of a certain time and place that have a hard time embracing new technology, especially people in music. You know, a lot of time it's the whole, oh, if it's not recorded analog, it doesn't sound authentic, yada, yada, yada. I imagine you're maybe not somebody that stands on that platform what are your opinions of that yeah no i mean when i was in the booking world for years i didn't care if i got a cassette that was falling apart and i had to put it back together again and there was holes in it but something came across from that cassette that's what i wanted to book not a million dollar recording i mean anybody can sound good with a million dollar recording you better yeah um but i think that something of the essence comes through no matter what the technology is which is why I think YouTube and all these people that are so successful doing things from the basement, perhaps like your own podcast, you don't need, you know, CBS to uh, to broadcast. You're, you're doing a great job with the technology you have. It isn't just about the technology, I don't think. It's never been about that, certainly not for me. It's never been about the gear. There are people who play on, you know, K guitars that they find in yeah. you know, trash dumps, and they sound wonderful. No, you so, mean... I've never hung up on the technology personally. No, you have a, a background in the world of punk rock. From You know what? <laughs> I do and I don't. You do and you don't. If you listen back to car signals, we sounded nothing. When people think of punk rock, I think, well, at least I do, I think of the of the clash of the pistols of the New York Dolls. Sure. Not, not the Orange Day, Green Day kind of bands. That was a whole other Californian sound. But I think of, you know, the Buzzcocks and all of that. And car signals never sounded like that. Yeah, but would you say that maybe there was like a similar uh, ethos, aesthetic, ethos to it? Because I always think, when I think of punk rock, I think of it almost like food. There's not one kind of food and there's not one kind of punk, but the thing that's common in it is that there's always a similar ethos to how it's being carried out. Like I've known... It was, I mean, and there was a scene locally and we were part of it. Most of the other bands all dressed alike kind of had hairstyles and we had none of that. Mm -hmm. it, it was really about experimenting with music and uh, we were most unfashionable looking, I think. Um, <laughs> but to some extent, when I think of punk rock, that's what I think of. Magazines mm -hmm. with, the, with the Ramones leather jackets and the haircuts and Susie and the Banshees and all of that stuff. And we were never a part of that. Yeah. Um, not that we were against it. We, we, liked, we went out to see shows like that. I saw the Ramones at the decade. Mm -hmm. uh, right? It was great. It just wasn't our bag. Our bag was something different. Totally. I get that. And I think that it definitely makes sense if you, you know, have a, if back then, if one would have had a, uh, some sort of a device to let them see the future music that you and everyone else who was a part of that project would do in one way or another, it would totally make sense. Like, yeah, they're on a different path perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that, you know, what's interesting, I think sometimes when you're younger and you're finding your voice as a musician, you know, it's easy to gravitate towards like these more um, something about punk and anything that was adjacent to it. You know, if you're just a young artist trying to find your voice and express yourself in an authentic way, I think it's really easy to get wrapped up in those communities, even if you're not 100 percent a part of it. You mean you're, you're emulating the style that you like or whatever? No, like like if you're a young artist, but like you're trying to do something new and fresh and like like you don't necessarily want to emulate something, but you're still doing something that doesn't really fit in with any particular sound. A lot of the times those people and tend to gravitate towards the punk communities because in one way or another, they're a little bit more accepting of hearing new things rather than like, trying well, to market I, straight for a one, rock One of the crowd. things I did like about some of the punk bands was that nobody really could play. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll listen to bluegrass these days and they're all out of Berkeley jazz and they play really well. It's too much. Sure. I prefer the old school bluegrass or the old school country music. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of the bands, I mean, I used to love the slits and people who really couldn't play but had really inventive melody lines and chords and drum beats. Yeah. There was a great band from Pittsburgh, The Puke. Mm -hmm. with a fabulous song called When I'm Bored, I Play One Chord. And of course, <laughs> the song had one chord in it, and it was just great. 
Uh, another great band was the Cardboards. Again, they really weren't a punk band. They were more electronic, uh, maybe German-influenced uh, art band of some kind. But they were just wonderfully creative and original. Yeah, I uh, think... The heart of most of the great bands at the time in Pittsburgh was this originality. You know... And they were all friends, even though our version of original was quite, quite different. We'd mm-hmm. all hang out together and play together. You know, that makes... I've always been very curious because I was born in 1985. So I obviously missed the... You know, the golden years, the, the golden years, right? <laughs> and I always look back on how people romanticize to some degree, like what punk rock was. But in when Pittsburgh. I talk, when I, in general, but I guess in okay, Pittsburgh yeah. too. But um, when I talk with people who were a part of it, I always get this feeling that it was so much more diverse of a thing in what the sound of punk was or what we consider the full sound of punk now is like this romanticized, very narrow version of what was actually going on. Cause I think there was so much more, like you mentioned, like artistic outside the box stuff and not all of it was the buzzcocks or the clash or the Ramones. There was other people doing things. And at the time, everybody right, would right. have considered it punk. And in England, the two tone thing was, was just fantastic and wonderful music and really was a kind of ahead of its time in breaking down uh, racial barriers and uh, the whole two-tone aesthetic was black and white musicians playing together and mm-hmm. learning from each other and borrowing from each other. And that was just fantastic. And there's lots and lots of visual artists involved. In Pittsburgh, I'm not quite sure, but there was a n- huge amount of photographers. We'd go to a gig, most of the bands would go to a gig, and there'd be 20 or 30 photographers there with really old-fashioned cameras. Mm-hmm. And it was a kind of an artsy scene and in a way to some extent the audience was bigger than the bands you know uh, and i think that's why people remember it fondly in pittsburgh the bands have gone but the audience is still there and most of them if not all of them are still involved uh, in photography or art or painting or sculpture or video or whatever mm-hmm. it is they're doing and the audience was always loomed large in pittsburgh the bands were on the stage but at the banana or the lions walk or wherever we were phase three and uh, the audience was uh, was pretty special